president passed away. So he was a, among the most loved president because first of all, he really fought against corruption, but also almost like 40% of the roads today was built under his time. And in just five years, he built massive people, massive roads, but also like he facilitated education among young children, especially girls. So one among the most loved presidents was actually him. Everything is coming on great. We're trying to get uh, everyone to come with us. That way we can start. I think the only thing I'm confused about is usually museums are a quiet place of learning, um, but it's a lot of music and noise. Yes, uh, is that children. something they do all the time? Because I don't remember the last two times. So, so there's a lot of children usually come here from schools, especially primary schools and secondary. So there's a lot of exhibition. And because children cannot learn very long time, you keep music to entertain them before they go back to learn. So that's what we do. Okay, so let's go this side. So family, I know it sounds like a club, but we are at a museum. <laughs> you have a fun guy, bro. <laughs> we just remodeled it. I appreciate the spirit, man. Good energy. <laughs> So this is the exhibition in the main part of the museum. But he was like the person. Yes, but he didn't pass away no. He actually went to the game now. Even though, even though, apart from this one, we have the AU right now, which is the African Union. 
He was among the founders of the African Union. So you can see from here, this is a picture of the founders of the African Union. Yes. They got a conference coming up, don't they? Yes, yes. Some of the, where's, last, where's some of the last great revolutionaries. I need to be early in Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa is yours. That's where like, it's the headquarters of the whole thing. Give me my land back. So you can see even the, the founder was Empala Haile Selassie. Yeah, right there. We had our first president here. First president of Uganda. Nayeri. Hey. Mobutu. Mobutu Seko Seko. Yeah, working together. Yeah. And that, first president of that, Kenya, right? That's here. that's why Mugutu was uh the garbage line he'd be in there too. Hey, there you go, family. <laughs> yes. Oh yes, a lot of information. Yeah. So. But they also do as in uh, digitalization. They put them this stuff in digital form, so you can study through their website. And all oh, that. so everything is on online. Yeah. All right. You just find lots of documentation. So this is the red. You can see. Lots of documentation, family. What's the average number of children for family? About uh, two to three, two to three. Yeah, okay. Two to three? Two to three or two to three. Yeah. Um, that's not nice, man. That's not nice to say. That. <laughs> so, is it true? So, what's African? 78% of white people had about when? I think it was I guess I must be the lucky one to this, you know? Yeah. So, how many? One of the lucky ones. I would say about, I would say about two to three or, or maybe two to four. You can ask some other people too. Per family. Five. 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 Yeah. Come on. You say well, that's down in Georgia. No, I'm people here. They don't even know the United States. United States. I told him. I told him. I told him two to three. I told him two to three. Oh, you're black people. What is the other number? Uh, two to three children per family. Yeah. Some people have two. Some people have three. Some people have four. Sure, absolutely. So actually, the, the one with the largest number of children in Tanzania has about 120 children. How many? 120 children. So how do you how do you take care of all those children? Yeah, yeah, they wait. Yeah. Yeah. One, you don't, you don't, you just keep, you yeah. just keep producing. No, no, no. They are one of the most <laughs> children in Tanzania. One man has 120 children. Yeah. One man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How many wives? 15, that's it? For 120 children? Yes, like 15 wives. So one woman's averaging about 8 children? 8 children is, is normal. Whoa! It is, it is, it is. My grandmother had it. It's not like surprising to have 8 children. I can't. Eight, I yes, I, 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 the previous generation. But, but, but I mean, the pre, like, if we did that like now, my parents' generation did that, but not like the modern generation. But Terry had 8 kids. Oh, I got you. Key point, I got you. I, I, I see it now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and if you have 10-15 you have a lot of land, and you have food, you have land, you don't work those kids. Right. So actually, the one with 120 children has uh, over like 5,000 sheep, I think, and like 300 cows. More than that, uh, 500 cows. So like, it's very little in comparison to people that with a lot of animals. No, like, it's not that they have the largest number of animals. No, they have very little. Like yes, but you don't like it. They live like in town and everything. So when, when, his, Russia, when his daughters get ready to get married, the men that want to marry the daughters must give him cows and sheep in order to marry his daughter. That's right. So you're gonna get a lot more. But it's not that way. Like the other children because of marriage. But you get States is under, it's under two. It's like 1.7 or something like that. Oh, that's what I was asking. It's low in so the United like, States. Right now, the number of children has decreased in Tanzania and it's like averagely five, I think. 
five. That's where we should be. I mean, at this rate of at this rate of population, what do we do? How do we? How do we bring the kids to one twelve? Now it's five. You know, we have to create the, the economy to take care of them. Since I was twelve, the higher the education of the children they have, that's the fact. The higher the education of the less children they have. So here we can get here. You can see our president with his children in the day of independence. Right there. So you can see him celebrating independence in the, in the state house. Oh, the man himself. <coughs> Beautiful African family. There you go, family. Our own next story. The father of the nation and his children. Wallamoon, <laughs> Julius <laughs> Nairi. <laughs> no, we don't eat raw. We don't do sushi. Sushi is not out of the food. Oh, tell them, brother. Hey, hey. I like that. It says sushi is not African food, so that's what the Asians brought family. Okay, so like, uh, like we know, Tanzania really supported a lot of countries to get independence. Mostly supported Mozambique. So the first president of Mozambique used this motorcycle when he was in Tanzania fighting for independence. Nothing but classics around here, family. Yeah. Classic cars, classic vehicles. So his name was Samola Michel. This is what he used. So he's one among the most closest leaders that we are aware to our first president. He really supported them to get independence. You can see him right here. This is the president's vehicle? Yes, he was used before he became a president. When he was in Tanzania fighting for independence, this is what the motorcycle was. Used. I think we have walked through the entire museum areas. Yes. So this is the last part of the, the, the walk-in museum tour? Actually, it depends on your time. And we have another exhibit? It depends on your time, like I say. Everything depends on your time. Oh, you're talking about the top floor? Yes. So this part here, we talk about the contribution of women into the independence of Tanzania. The contribution of women? Yes. In Tanzania. So like, women. Yeah, so this one about contribution of women, I think they should be the ones. <laughs> so one thing about Tanzania is that we don't, we're not afraid to say that women really were a huge percent led to the independence and unification of Tanzania. So one of the most influential women that led to the independence was this one. This one is called Debititi Mohammed, right here. We still have a street named after her today, called Debititi Mohammed Street. See, because she, she was the one that brought over 60% of the people like to, to, to the political party that gave us independence. So she solely built up the party. She was the most charismatic leader that you know, everybody could listen to. Our first president, as you know, was, he was good at talking, but he wasn't that good at encouraging people as she was. Wow. So she was very important in all this aspect. And that's why even after independence, she was named the first woman to be the minister of health and development. Excellent. So it was straight after independence because of the role. So our first president didn't really mind the gender, but look at the contribution that he actually did. And actually, women led to the independence and the unification of Tanzania. So Tanzania was the unification of Tanganyika and Zanzibar. So, right, uh, so when the two countries wanted to unite, 
the principal people that supported the unification was the wife of Nyerere, our first president, and the wife of the first president of Zanzibar, that really encouraged the husband to unify the nation that we have today. And behind you, those are the, this is the wife of the first president of, of Tanganyika, and this one is the wife of the first president of Zanzibar. So, and, uh, also here in the Congress, like women, women-led Congress that you can see here, so there was one that really influenced the decision making. So it, that's the way that, for example, Tanzania today, it's not hard to see women in any position in the government or any role in the society. This is because of the early on contribution of this, of the women-led Congress also in Tanzania. And right now, every party in Tanzania since independence had the, uh, the segment that is only led by, like the women-led part of, of the party. This is also to influence mostly uh, women-related issues and children-related issues are almost there to that. But not only this one, we had this one, sorry. Let me take it back again here. And one day we said you get stuff done. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, so for example, if you see this one here, this one is Bichestan Chimbi. Her name is Bichestan Chimbi. She was the one that went all across Tanzania after independence try to educate other women on the importance of, of balanced diet. Because straight after independence, everybody only ate the food that was culturally created manufactured in their own culture. For example, I was only eating fish, or traditionally eating fish, because that's where we are next to Lake Victoria. So she went all across the region educating on the importance of eating cross-cultural foods, which helped us to balance diet. And nobody was paying her to do it, so she was solely doing it on her own. So she was among the most important people in that so today you can see people eat food of any tribe, mostly because of her. And here we can see again the Pan-African Congress, which is a women-led Congress. But here, this one is the first woman to be a chief in the history of Tanzania. So she was born in 1922, and she's from the area known as Kigoma, which is next to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So if you've ever, you ever been in that region, it was mostly like the region that men are men. I know you can, the place where men are men is that region. Like they're very tough, very protective of their you know, manhood and like everything. So it was very rare and very unique for a, for a woman to be a chief in that area. Not only that she was the chief in that area, she was the head of all the chiefs in Tanzania. She was also the first woman to be the head of all the chiefs in Tanzania. Mm. And she was one about really supporting the, uni the unification and also the independence of Tanzania. So her name she is Mwami Teresa, Chief Mwami Teresa. So she's among the most important women in the, the history of Tanzania. But this is where the, the teacher was named the Minister now of Health and Development by our first person. But also here we can see some other uh, the military. Hey, I'm coming on the song. We're wrapping up. So this is what we can do. Uh, we can wrap it up right here, and then we can just do the last exhibition on the top. Yes. So family, yes. we'll continue with some more yes. footage. I hope you enjoy this yes. part of the museum.